<laughs> Here we go. Welcome back to my channel on building a DIY expedition camper. Ah. It's time. Got to cut another really big hole into this camper. Got to build the pass through. Got to cut it into the camper and sealed up. That's what we're going to talk about today. Let's do it. A DIY expedition camper, big pass through. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I know. Some of you probably think, God, when's this project going to end? So do I. Some big things you have to do, all right? So there's been a lot of big things done. One is I started out, of course, selecting a chassis, plain old cab, right, with the frame. Cut a big hole. Then went ahead and, of course, built a total composites camper, attached it to this thing, did a bunch of chassis modifications, and then more holes got going on, right? Had to cut holes in for all the windows and the skylights, the two skylights on a roof, the five windows that go around the camper, including the one on the back wall. All that was really tough, really scary. All those had to be perfect. Then cut the big garage door openings in down there, one on each side, big massive garage doors, and I'm making my own garage doors, if not to make this complicated and hard enough. But, of course, I got one more really big hole to cut, and a couple little other small ones. But right now, we're going to get to the really big one, and that is, I actually have to cut a big chunk of the front wall of this camper out, because why? Because I've got to basically make use of that whole rear wall that I cut out of the cab here so I can actually have a pass-through between the cab and the camper. So, I've done a bunch of stuff in my past videos. Let's get into it. Did, of course, an articulation test. I've shown you a couple different ones of those. Jacket the vehicle, taking it out, trying to push this chassis to its limits, which I did not get it to its limits. But I went ahead and tried to understand just how much stretch I can get out of this chassis. And now I've got to plan out not only the cutting of this cab to camper pass through, but also how to seal it up. And I say sealed up, it's much more complicated than how others have done it or that I've seen anybody else do it. Why? Because I want to add additional functionality. I actually want to have a door on the cab, nothing new there, but I want to have a door that doesn't swing up or swing open so it doesn't get in the way of things inside the cab or swing open into the camper so it's in the way of things in the camper. So I'm doing it differently. We'll get into that in a future video. I also, to add more to it, want to have a door on the camper side. Don't even really also want one, I kind of need one. And I need one, why? Because my shower's in the entryway there, right? Where the cab to camper pass through is. Now that was all planned by design, same with the door and everything else. But again, that means that that door has to seal well, and again, can't just swing open and be in the way of the shower. So I've got to account for that. I've seen how some others do it, which is fantastic ideas. I'm going to do it differently than I've seen anybody else do it. And again, not just to be different, but because I think it'll work better. It'll work better for the layout, the format, provide more space utilization, and I can also add electrification to all these doors, meaning I can operate them electrically. And there's a lot of benefits to that, not just the fact that I can push a button to close it or open it, but it makes it far more secure. It means I can open and close it from anywhere, anytime. I can also have it automatic, so if certain things going on with the vehicle or whatever else, they can automatically close, and a lot of other benefits to it as well. But I'll get into that again in a future video. So make sure you subscribe, stay tuned, and keep watching this DIY Expedition Camper build. Here we go. Ah. And this all starts with getting it perfectly measured because it has to be perfectly placed in exactly the right spot. This is critical. Okay, cool. And then we just need to come level across. You go ahead and line up your corner, and then we'll go to level. Okay, that's that's on mid side or center line. We are level, or so we thought. There we go. We are perfect. And really to cut to the chase, we measured it multiple times, many different ways, with different tape measures and different levels, digital and analog. And we found that we weren't quite right in our dimensions. And so the cause of that was actually because we were using slightly different measuring devices. So that's a little tip and trick. And because of that, we went ahead and erased one of these lines and redid it. That's true. We shouldn't use this. We should not have used two different instruments to make. Is yeah. that if I do this, my PVC can't, it has to stop at that corner. Oh, could you, can so you, what I do is I go like this, and that way the PVC comes in the corner, I get that straight, right? But are you going to cover, is, there, is that visually going to, you know? It'll cover it. It'll cover it? Yeah, it'll cover it fully, because that PVC is going to go like this. 
But I ended up in that corner, so it'll cover that up. Okay. So yeah. If, you, if it's covering it, then I wouldn't worry about it. I was just I, gonna, like, I think so. I think I'm just going to go right into the corner. Okay, we're confident in our holes, our, our corners. <laughs> Up there. There we go. All right. There are two things going on here that are really key. One is I'm using a drill guide to ensure that the holes I'm drilling are perfectly perpendicular to the wall panel, in part because I have to drill through from both sides because this panel is three and a quarter inches thick, a little bit deeper than some of my drill bits and especially the hole saws will drill and also those hole saws have to actually be drilled out a little bit in the corners because they're creating both the strain relief as well as a cavity for the trim to go into. Eight holes drilled for four corners. Now we have two more all the way hole through. So two to go on our holes here. And it's really key that these holes get drilled perfectly perpendicular to the wall panel and also in exactly the same spot, both the inside and the outside, because I have to drill these holes from both the outside of the wall and the inside of the wall using those same first holes that I use as my hole saw drill guides in those corners. And you'll notice also, once again, that these holes may not look like they're perfectly lined up with the lines that are marked for where the cuts will be, and that is specific and that is right in order to make sure again that everything lines up right and there is cavity for uh, strain relief and also for the trim panels to get into and you'll see that in a little more coming up here we go i gotta do it i gotta cut into this bad boy again not that i want to do it i don't like doing it but i gotta do it gotta cut into it now being that this is my first expedition camper build project, a lot of time is spent just trying to figure out how to actually do the setup and the cuts and the process itself. And in this case, I didn't actually film any of the cutting because it was dusty and dirty and noisy and very compact space in a pretty hectic little environment. But you can see here we set up a stand, a little bit of a platform, and then actually use the cutout of the entry door as a platform because it's incredibly strong, the structural panel, and put that on some stands around really the engine so we had that panel off the engine so I could stand essentially over the engine without putting weight onto the engine and then of course putting some tarps and stuff down to keep all the dust and everything off the engine and so forth and this worked incredibly well and allowed for really quick work and then to move on to actually the next step. All right so now that I've got the pass-through cut this nice big pass-through it's about three feet wide by about 28 inches tall so that was really as tall as I could do it within the Earth Cruiser frame on the back of the cab, which is they maximized that height, so that's great that they did that. And I need a little bit of room for the frame of my door, both on the cab and on this side, mostly on the cab side. So I need a little bit of room for that door. And so that's my height limit. My width has got narrowed down from what Earth Cruiser actually made, which was a little bit wider, um, which would have came out more to here. But that's because my bathroom cabinet starts from this wall and comes out 28 inches from this wall. And so I've got it so it's just going to maximize that. My cabinet will come right out pretty much to the edge of this door. My door will just overlap this here, my interior door from the cab here. So my way to build this is a couple, of, there's a few things in consideration is that one is there aren't really many building materials that are available in this 3.23 inches thick front wall here, if hardly any. There's a few, but very few that are U-channel that I could just kind of wrap this around. And I don't have any excursions to do that. And I could have, of course, bought the Total Composites excursions and cut them in half, but they have a nice big bulbous space that would be really wasted. And so it would have to do a lot of trimming and it wouldn't really, it wouldn't really add any value. It would have actually sucked up space of my pass through here just to simply use their extrusion. So I'm building my own extrusion. I'm building it here with some plastics and I've got it both in angles and in U-channel. I did find a U-channel that can fit just over this and I'm gonna use it in the bottom here. It's gonna add additional strength on the bottom and it'll encapsulate it and I can level it out with some nice sealant in between here. The sealant, really the purpose of that is, is really just to get it level and to create structure or all the way across or an even platform all across because my cut is not perfect with the circular saw. It's close, but it's a little bit off. You know, it's a little wavy, a little choppy. You can probably see that the foam is not perfectly cut, not like it would with a machine, uh, like a CNC cutter or something like that. So this is my way to get the bottom level, which is really key. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to encapsulate that with angles, angles from the outside and then angles from the inside. They're going to overlap the outside. There's a couple reasons for that. One that keeps my outside piece 
as thin as possible because I've got my frame from the cab really close. I have just a minimal gap there, about a half an inch between the cab and the front wall of this, that I need to create additional seal. And there'll be a little bit of movement on that that can shrink down to as little as a quarter of an inch. So I've got to minimize the thickness of this. So that's one. Also, I want a really nice slippery material like this plastic is here, but not so slippery that I can't glue it and adhere it down. So I made sure I chose adhesives that will actually adhere all this down. And they're also outdoor rated. We'll deal with the durability. Got a good enough hardness rating and impact strength rating and tensile strength rating that it'll support knees and, and feet stepping on this and bridge that across the platform here so it doesn't you know embed into the foam or or crack the plastic at all and also at the same time having a plastic where I can also adhere my internal seal for my pass-through so there's a whole lot of different things here I got to think about in all this and create enough strength but also to add thickness again to the inside not any any more than addition than needed and of course this bottom piece is going to add a little bit of thickness it's a tenth of an inch my angles that are going to start from the sides here and go down are actually going to canter out ever so slightly a tenth of an inch only a tenth of an inch not a big deal at all easy enough for the adhesive sealants to to take that you know and, and seal that up and, and create the strength for it which there really isn't a lot of strength for that, but it'll fully seal that. But that gives me both a little bit of a shedding on the outside of rain away from this, uh, which is kind of what I want. And the other thing it does is also the cab, it really, when I lose some of that gap, it, it's at the top, not at the bottom. So it allows me to almost like keep a nice perfect uniformity as the cab is moving and flexing with the cabin. And it gives me this extra structure down here without adding any undue thickness, but just enough that I can work with it and yet give me that strength. And so that's really the benefit of this. Once I get that capped on, then I go ahead and put my bottom angle on in my sides and then of course my top cap from the outside and then of course we'll do rect effectively just repeat the same thing from the bottom the sides and the top up doing 45 degree mitered corners because that'll create a nice smooth transition for both my indoor cabin seal and my outdoor cab seal as well between the two so it'll be nice and smooth for whatever seal is going to rub up and along that there and so that's my easiest way to do it it's a little bit more work making 45 degree mitered angles and just going straight but i do believe it'll make it a stronger connection a stronger uh, joint here and a better transition for a nice smooth seal but a little more complicated to make sure all my cuts have to be essentially pretty perfect like right on as always the way i do it my cuts pretty much got me down to a millimeter of perfection, so I'll have to do it that way again. But I'm excited this is going to work. I've got my cap here that's on there, and now it's time to go and get this thing done. So let's go get it done. I've already got this cut to my length. I'm going to glue this in, cut my angles on the inside and outside of length, on the inside or outside, but also adhere to each other in the middle. So that should create a really good bond between them. The key here is really choosing adhesive sealants that really work with all these materials, the fiberglass and, of course, the plastic here that I'm using. So that's the trick, but yeah, it, it's all going to come together. It's going to work well. So let's get this going. And one of the really key things here is I'm making sure I'm using materials that are non-thermally conductive. So I'm not going to transfer heat from the inside of the camper to the outside and thus condense liquid on them and freeze up and things like that. That's very key. And also materials that are very strong, have great tensile strength and impact strength from knees hitting them and things like that. So that's pretty key. And I also created these staggered miter corner cuts so they all interlock together. It was more complicated, took a lot more time than I had anticipated but it creates a much stronger bond here between all the different extrusions wrapping around this corner. Very, very, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yes. Oh God, that's beautiful. Oh my God, that is perfection. Oh my God, as if a computer cut that. That is, that's gonna work. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Oh, okay, let's get the next one cut. Only three to go. <laughs> and then glue them all in. Whew, okay, I've got the two bottoms and the two tops installed. And again, they're sandwiching from the inside and outside the, the angles here. Now I've got to do the, I've got the other one cut for the other side there and the other 
the front here. You see that's already tempered in. They're not glued in place yet. But I need to do the final one. So here's how I've determined to do it after cutting eight of these because there's two top, two bottom, two on each side. And so it's a lot. Is really what I do is I come in first and measure my outside corner to corner now that these two are already glued in there. And that's, you know, I measure that. And then that's where I cut my 45s. But you can see I've got a problem here because the way I cut this, if I do my 45 like that, because I didn't cut it that way, so I've got to cut the other piece a little differently. I have to notch it differently. So I have to cut it all the way through like this angle, and then I come back in and notch out this, call it squared off corner here. It is a pain. So now I'm paying for it by having to do these extra cuts. And it's a lot of extra work, because I almost have to step into it in the final cut there. Being that it's so precise, I want to make sure I've got a good seal. It looks great, but it's also, it's flush, it's smooth for the seals to rub alongside it and attach to it. And also I don't have these call it goopy corners or anything, or places where water could leak in if the sealant it hit ever broke down. So that's how I got to do it. So I literally cut with a chop saw at an angle, then cut the, the notches with a band saw, and then I come back in with a circular saw if needed just to straighten up those band saws, just because the band saw doesn't cut perfectly straight, it cuts at a bit of an angle. I can't get that to adjust right. 31 and 13 sixteenths. Okay, just back from band saw, chop saw, and table saw. And that looks really excellent. Another sixteenth of an inch. And by this point in time, I'd already glued in the top and the bottom extrusions wrapping around the top and the bottom openings. Now I have to cut in these sides and it's a little bit harder cutting in the sides now that the top and bottoms are done because the top and bottoms can no longer move or be adjusted in any way. And now those sides have to really be perfectly matched up. And so a little bit of a trickiness here to get them all just perfect. Yeah, that looks awesome. Just a tiny bit of adhesive in there that's keeping that from getting perfectly flush and flat, but that looks great. Okay, let's get the top. And yes, once I'd get the bottom or one of those corners just perfect, I would then go ahead and have to do the other one to get it just perfect as well so that everything perfectly lined up and also interlocked together at each one of these corners. Again, a lot more work than necessary. Okay, let's go cut that down. Okay, moment of truth. Just made my last final cut, I hope. Let's see how she fits in here. And with these notched interlocking miter corners that I created, they literally do interlock or connect together once they're perfectly fit. A hair. Oh my God, I'm talking about a hair. Okay, how's it fit? Pretty damn close. Like it's so close, there's just a tiny bit of adhesive sealant on this piece here that I just have to cut away because it's effectively pushing it out like it's called a 30 seconds of an inch or about a millimeter. I do strive for Perfection, this pass-through has not been my most perfect hour or many hours. I made some bad cuts, some, some incorrect cuts, I would say even, and probably could have used some better methods and tools as I have evolved uh, through the process. But, but I'm getting there. There we go. Now, this thing should fit in like a perfection. As if this was cut with CAD and on a computer. Oh man, that is a pretty damn perfect corner. I'm gonna call that as good as perfect. Okay, now I gotta, I'm gonna vacuum up all around this plastic dust and debris. Then I'm gonna take rubbing alcohol and paper towels, wipe everything down really well and get all my adhesive sealant ready and get this glued in there. It's pretty exciting to have this done, be sealed in, framed in. It's been a lot of work, no doubt. It's been a lot of work, but hey, I am stoked. It's almost there. Now I gotta clean up all my pieces too. So rubbing alcohol on the pieces as well as all the way around the frame after I vacuum it so I get all the debris out. Should be good to go. Cool. And this is what it looked like from the outside with all the extrusions on the top and bottom glued in and also being held in by some tape. And I put the tape there to make sure they had a really tight connection to the outside wall. 
And of course, they're also pulled together. And then I went ahead and cleaned everything up after I removed all the tape, cleaned up again the little residual heaps of sealing on the edges there. Got all the new extrusions that I'm about to glue in all cleaned up on both sides to ensure that they are ready to be adhered into place. Now, a couple of tips, and I know this are sometimes a little bit boring, maybe even seemingly like self-explanatory, but I clean both sides of the part that I'm gluing up, adhering up, even though it's not the actual side I'm going to be adhering. And that way I just make sure I'm not transferring any dirt from, they call it the dirty side onto the clean side or it falling off into the joint. And I even try to clean up my pencil marks and pen marks, you know, that I may have in here, just make sure there's you know, nothing here that's going to create a, a poor bond, even if it's in a tiny, tiny little spot. And make sure also the part that I'm cleaning up, the wall here, I'm cleaning up all the way far around the areas I'm, I'm adhering just to make sure, again, there's nothing that's going to, you know, fall down into the joint or, or get glued in if there's a little bit of overlap on the glue that just doesn't happen in there. And even the parts that I've already glued in, I'm also just cleaning up again just to make sure they're clean so that any bond between these two parts is going to be solid. I also, I'm swapping out my paper towel every couple of pieces just to make sure again I'm not like transferring dirt onto, from one piece onto another, you know, and or scratching it with any dirt that builds up on one piece onto another, particularly because there's some abrasive dust here, you know, from the fiberglass to the, the plastics here. Anyways, I make sure also I've glued up all of my uh, pieces that I didn't already adhered in. Just that way, if there's any bonding, it goes in between them, like in these corners and stuff. It all happens simultaneously at the same time. Cut away any little bit of extra adhesive in the corners here that could cause a little bit of a problem uh, somewhere. And of course, before I also clean these off, I did vacuum these pieces off. But the vacuum only gets it so well, there's still some little fine dust that gets left behind that I can see. But at least the vacuum gets the bigger particulates and stuff. So again, I'm not just spreading those around or scratching the piece that I'm a glue uh, with the, that debris that's in there. And you notice I even clean these edges here because again, they are also a part that's going to be adhered. Uh, they're going to be adhered from corner to corner here. So I go back over, look at all my stuff. And then any little stuff with, before I throw away my paper towel, I just go ahead and clean up all my little debris that might be on the ground here. And so just again, trying to keep the space clean. I'm not spreading debris around. That's really the key here is not to keep just spreading debris around. Keep this space clean and so I've got a good working space. So those are a few little basic tips that hopefully will help you with any adhesive sealant job that you are doing. I'm also going to start with the piece where it probably matters the least if I mess up a little bit purely just from practice sake uh, just so I can remind myself of any little skills or anything that I've forgotten that I need to uh, remember on how to apply this. And also realize too is that the top and the bottom sections here, they've had several days to dry up. So that adhesive sealant's been in there for, for many days. And so it's gotten really nice and, and nice and dried up in there. Here we go. <laughs> What's my glue side here? That one. Okay. Let's make sure before I go. I haven't mixed up my pieces. I sure do fit very similarly. <laughs> All right, here we go. And as you guys have probably seen from my previous videos, I do a lot of research on all the materials I use, including the adhesive sealants. And I made sure I used an adhesive sealant that was appropriate for not only the camper composite panels, but also these PVC extrusions as well. And that will really seal them up well and be very strong over time. In this case, the Coropop, which is excellent for this purpose. And really, this is just kind of a... a contiguous dirty work here just get in there and just start gluing them up both on the sides the ends and also down the middle between the inside and outside extrusions here okay i very liberally applied my sealant and particularly because this is also going to be an outside one and i also applied sealant down to the gap here against the foam just to make sure and into all these little corner grooves i do like not wearing gloves at times 
because it really allows you to get a great feel and really put a lot of pressure down to get these corners all pressed in and sealed down. And what I probably haven't mentioned is this will all be painted. These pieces will be painted and then they'll be covered in a fabric. So they'll be fully sealed up. This feels really great. It looks really great. And we'll have a chance to come back in over later and really seal up all of these little corners and the gap cracks, little tiny cracks and stuff, the gaps between them. But I just like cleaning this stuff up now as much as I can, get it smoothed out while I have gloves out. And just make sure I've got all the sealant pressed into these little gaps here so that I know everything's nice and tight and strong. Okay, I'm going to take this glove off. I hate going through gloves and paper towels so liberally, but it's kind of necessity. I'm going to make sure these are well sealed up, clean up any residual adhesive. And I don't, I was going to tape them over to make sure they hold in place, but I can't actually get them to even move really at all now that they're in place and they are rock solid and so and i'm going to tape over where i've got some adhesive sealant right now to pull these into each other and hope that the tape won't get stuck to the adhesive sealant i don't think that it will i'm also going to try to focus on taping it to the wall so i can kind of get over this adhesive sealant on the gaps here and make sure it's really tight on these gaps to pull them in. They are pressed up against each other. There we go. All right, let's get on to the next one. Okay, final piece. This has not been my, my absolute perfection I would always love to have, but dealing with adhesive sealants and these very fine, fine little cuts here, this was definitely a challenge, and I am, I think, going to be very happy with how the, this is going to turn out even if it's, oh God, that joint is so perfect. I will have to give you guys a close of that when this is done and my hands aren't covered in adhesive sealant. Okay, final piece is on. Woo, yes. pass -throughs cut in the cabin. That is huge. I cut it in the cab, oh gosh, many months ago now. Go back to my video and you can check that out. I'll put a link up here in the video. But right now that cab pass through, cabin pass through is cut. The cab pass through is cut. The cabin pass through is now cut. Now it's time to marry the two and see if they actually line up. And I say marry the two. I'm not going to put any kind of seal or anything in between them yet. But I'm going to go ahead and put the cab up for the first time since I've cut this. I just simply glued this in only yesterday afternoon. So it's only been drying up for a day. So my, my whole wrapping and framing around it. So I'm going to go now put the cab up and let's see how she matches up. Let's hope. Let's hope. Let's see. Let's see how she marries up. I'm scared. Even though I measured everything, I know it should work. I measured everything. I've measured it many times. <sighs> Got my dry erase markers up here, but here we go. Let's close the cab and let's hope it lines up. Otherwise, I have two holes, one in my cab, one in my cabin that don't line up. That is a problem. Also, got my brand new shiny alternator here. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. It is remembered. Uh. I have a bag over the air intake. That is something you must always do when you put these up. Make sure you cover that up. Let me show you. Yep. Gotta remove this. Don't want that stuck in there. Wouldn't be terrible unless I start it up. Okay, now we can close. Okay, let's see if these match up and line up. I hope. All right. Everything seems good. Hope everything's out of the way. It feels and looks okay. All right. Everything seems good. Hope everything's out of the way. It feels and looks okay. 
Let's go take a look. Come with me. Oh, God. Let's see here now. Oh. Oh, let's see. She looks good. Oh, look at that. That is perfect. All the way around. All the way around. All the way around. Oh, look at that. There's my camper. Look at it. See that? Here's my camper. It's what I've been building. Oh. Yes. <laughs> oh, one really, really big thing that is now done. I say big because it's been huge. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for like months to do this. It's been scary. It's been frightening. I wasn't sure exactly how I'm going to do it, but it's done. <laughs> it looks it looks perfect. <laughs> it does. I'm stoked. I'll go over more on this and why I did it this way and how I'm going to seal it. But yeah, it's cut. It's cut. The camper's cut. You want to see what seal looks like? There you go. That's essentially what it looks like. Let's go take a look at the air side. Come on. Come with me. Let's go. Oh, we got to put the bumper up. Hard to get around this thing. Oh, let's see. Oh, God. It looks good. Oh, it looks good. Oh, yes. Have it down there? Yes! Up there? I can't see. Can you? Oh, God. Okay, I think this looks good. And this is a little preview of what it looks like when it's all done with the adhesive sealant spread through the corners and, of course, these pieces all glued in and, of course, the inside the camper, which is the first time I actually saw this view and it's pretty fantastic from both the inside and the outside. You can see that these extrusions wrapping around here, which are really a double wrap with the U-channels and then the 90s, makes us very strong and durable and, of course, just a little clamp in a couple of the corners to really pull that in. And, of course, here's a little picture of some of the holes that are drilled out, which sometimes you got to save these little remnants. Uh, then I went ahead and put some tape down all the way around the edges so I could seal up all the edges of these extrusions or these uh, angles that are all the way around. And this is really important for a couple of reasons. One is to make sure that, of course, they are weather tight so that nothing will ever get inside or in between those extrusions. And of course, that it keeps them also nice strong and attached to the camper walls themselves. But the second main reason too is also because both the cabin pass-through seals and also the camper door seals will also be rubbing up against the edges of these. So I want to make sure they're all really tight and strong and also have a smooth finish to them so those seals will also seal and be able to blend over them very nicely. And in addition to also sealing up the exterior edges, I also went ahead and sealed up not only the interior corners to make sure that they have a lot of nice strength and a good bond there, but also sealing up the actual gap between the angles where they marry together in the middle. And that's to make sure, of course, they're also sealed from the outside, have a little additional strength layer on them. And regardless of a little bit of, call it over sealant here, all that's going to be covered up eventually at some point in time. And I will show you actually before the end of this video, the first layer of that cover up and to make sure that it looks good and has a nice smooth finish. And then of course, one of my concerns that I always have is I want to make sure I remove the tape fairly soon before any of this adhesive sealant, of course, starts attaching to it. And I can also come back and smooth out those little edges at the edge of the tape. And of course, any overlap that has happened over the tape itself or anywhere else. And this is important, of course, to do this before all this adhesive sealant does cure over, which is happens in about 30 minutes or so, depending on climate. So it's pretty quick. So anyways, you can see me coming over and just smoothing everything out, make sure it's nice and cleaned up. I want, again, nice clean edges here and nice clean corners and the centers here as well. So just a lot of little cleanup and process to go through and do, but this makes a really nice finish. And you've heard me say it before, and I'll say it once again, just to make sure it's clear and helpful to you. If any of you doing any kind of work like this, building something like this yourself, is that make sure you keep extra boxes of the gloves, extra rolls of paper towels or some other cleanup, and of course, extra rolls or tubes or sausages of the adhesive sealant that you're using. So you can make sure you can move quickly, not have any kind of issues with running out of materials or have to go get them. And of course, having a trash can very close by so you can just simply easily discard these rubber gloves and the paper towels and things like that as they get kind of drenched with this sealant. You need another clean towel or glove to work with. And here we go. The finished product I think looks really good. It came out great. It's very strong and well sealed up. Yeah! <laughs> Ta -da. Coming to you from my passer. Now finally cut through. Yay. I finally did it. It was not an easy thing to do, but I finally did. I'm so excited I did it. It looks great. 
and the inside and outside. I know it's a little uh, rough right now. This is all going to be painted over in a matching white and that will help also do a final seal on this before I actually create my fabric pass-through seal that will connect the cab to the cabin here. So, and nonetheless, this is now fully sealed up. I've got all the extrusion here on the front wall that I cut out all wrapped over with this plastic. It's, a, it's an impact resistant, chemical resistant, UV resistant, essentially plastic that just happened to fit the right size of so the extrusion here with just a tiny little bit of call it overlap in the middle and they since they overlap it just causes a little bit of a rise right here in the middle just ever so slight and that's why I sealed that up too so I also encapsulated this over another U-channel piece of plastic U-channel so again I have no thermal transfer from the inside to the outside or inside here of the cabin to the inside of the cab and of course from the outside environment that this will be essentially connected to um, with the seal around it. So this will all be create no thermal transfer, fully seals everything up here. It's gonna seal it up from water from the inside, the outside, everything else. So it's sealed in. I am stoked to have this done. And once this gets dried up, it's already, the extrusions in here have already been drying up for a week. And once those are glued in, now I did my final seal around this. A week later, I'll let this dry up also for several days, if not a week or more, before I come back over and apply my paint finish to this. There's no rush to do that right now. I'll let this dry really nice and thoroughly and have my fabric seal cut. So that's it. This is really exciting. And this is what it looks like from both the inside and the outside. It's all done and everything's all sealed up and nice and strong. Now I'm going to go ahead and paint it. I'm going to paint it with a really durable rubberized paint that's going to seal this even better and provide some additional both protection from the UV weather and also sealing. Okay, I'm really worried about the tape being able to be peeled off after I use this, uh, this, this paint on it because it says it pretty much sticks to everything. This uh, Gorilla Flex Seal paint, patch and seal paint. So I've been worried, uh, I woke up <laughs> late last night wondering if it's going to be able to peel off the tape. And I just started peeling it off. And thankfully it seems to be peeling off. Let's take a look here. Let's see how this stuff is coming off. Pretty happy with the texture. It's still a little bit tacky, so be careful on it. But it also did kind of drip down a little bit. You can see these kind of build up as a drip. So I'm not happy about that at all. It's it's not terrible. I was planning on going over their coat, and that I may do. Okay, good. Look at the bottoms coming off. That's the one I really be worried because there's a lot of buildup here on the bottom piece with all this drip down that happened. But yeah, it's coming off actually pretty well. Oh, really well. Wow. Okay, perfect. Oh, that's so great. Good. Okay, well at least, the, at least the, the tape is coming off. Now we just got to figure out what to do about these little drip marks here that I want to smooth out. I probably am going to have to come after it with another layer of paint, even though I don't really need it. So that's a bit of a bummer. And up here I see I've got a couple little drip marks right there. So I'll have to work on that. But see how it's sealed up really everything really nicely. It's really, really looking great. I, I kind of wish I'd just use this instead of the, the spray paint initially. But I felt like I need that because I didn't think it was going to adhere very well to this plastic without it. But it does say it specifically adheres to this kind of plastic. You know, I was a little worried about it, but it seems to be adhering just fine. And we'll see. I'll see how easy it is to put on another light coat, try to smooth out some of these little um, drips here that have been developed. And if I can just cut those drips off or smooth them out, maybe once it dries, like a little bit of sandpaper or something. So we'll try. Hey, at least the paint's coming off. All right, one to go. Oh, then I gotta get the inside, of course. Yeah, that's all right. It's looking all right. Right on. And a little quick view of the finished product on the inside of the pass-through. All right, let's go see how she looks. Not bad, huh? Not bad. Everything lines up perfectly, absolutely perfectly. Height, everything else. And this pocket's actually where the door is going to go. That pocket's intentional, of course, because that's where the bathroom cabinet is. And you can see it's already being built. It comes right out uh, up to that space. And this is where the big pass-through door will be on both the camper side and on the cab side. More to come on that soon. Thank you.
so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing with others. And certainly if you like this video and my many, many videos now, well into the 70s on my DIY expedition camper build that I am making these videos and sharing this with you to hopefully help you and help others with their camper builds or ideas on how to build whatever it is you're building that may be something similar and so forth. So hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully you like it. Please do like and subscribe. Do share with others and keep watching because there's a lot to come, especially building out these special doors custom doors I got to build for these getting the doors done for the garage doors the big garage gear garage doors in the back and uh, building out the spare tire carrier that I'm building myself uh, with some storage cubbies and other things and a few other things going on here so it's a lot of exciting stuff a lot to come keep watching oh how do I get down now I'm holding the camera